Stefan is a filmmaker and a media artist and since a long, long time working for Belgian TV. And I guess lots of people know him already. Um, his talk is headed with impact, complicity, fascination. Um, Stefan. So, excuse me, sorry, uh, but we will... I want to show you a little uh, video documentation, but we skip that. So, um, you know, some, some say, you know, that we live in, uh, in times that are obsessed with process, and um, I don't know if that is true, but I think it might be true for me. I've always been very interested in processes, you know, experimenting with processes, inviting other people, other, other individuals to join processes before making the piece, calling for new approaches, testing and questioning them all the time. So I continue, I continue doing this, uh, if possible, with students, especially at the Technical University Architecture in Delft. Um, now, you may think, well, yes, you know, it's quite obvious why he, me, as a maker, should be interested in process. Because critical, meaning self-aware, artistic works always come out of result from process, or don't they? Well, again, as you know, this is definitely not always the case. It is never that simple. Making art is pretty much a direct action, and it doesn't need process per se. So then, why this obsession with process? And what has all of this to do with this Vortex Symposium, I think, and with YouTube. Maybe, I think maybe it has to do with you, it has to do with me, with all of us, with this massive quantity of users to which we belong, using media, our mobiles, iPods, PCs, to copy and paste media constantly, and doing so to help expanding the media sphere. The media sphere is a space of its own. And what do we see inside of it? Of a media sphere that essentially is a world that constantly is making copies of itself. And the copies of the copies connect and divide according to the same principle. Which means that the structure of the media sphere has something self-generative. It drives itself as a phenomenon. And this phenomenon doesn't need content to function that way. It doesn't need content for that. What it is living on is process, and more precisely, processes of the automatic, self-generative kind. So that's the reason, I guess, why two years ago I said that uh, YouTube has little to do with user-made content, but all the more with user-driven impact. At that time, two years ago, I got interested in the notion of impact, and I'm very grateful to Keith, uh, who at the very first Vortex Festival said something, he said many things, but he said one thing that has since inspired me a lot. He said, then I want to create impact in order to study it. And as for me, on the contrary, I came to the conclusion that a situation of impact hardly creates anything more than just more impact. In a situation of impact, you know, a bomb, an info bomb, you definitely do not think critically about impact. You run. Agreed, every maker, at least to some extent, is an impact maker, because it's hard to imagine a maker who strives for zero impact. But it makes a difference if you, as a maker, strives for 100% impact, going for the maximum impact on your viewers, that is, or if you minimize your impact in order to make space for other aspects of relating to your public. So at that time, two years ago, I was preparing an installation uh, called Varum 2.0, of which of, there's lots on the web of it. And I decided to make of it a, an arena, an installation arena, and to study impact, to try to apply impact in a modular way. 
So, so far you could say this is the kind of introduction of this presentation. And what I would like to do now is to give you some insight in how I deal with process. So even if it sounds large at times, be sure I want this presentation to be modest and it tells only about my personal positioning. So I do not claim anything about anything and I definitely do not speak for you. So even when I announce a new science, as I did with a part, in part of a tongue in cheek, you know, two years ago with impactology, and as I would like to do today with the introduction of these categories of disenactment, never at no time it is my intention to apply these systems, procedures, and techniques, techniques of development instrumentally. For me, they are analytical tools for a better understanding, mental tools, with which I hope to better understand what I'm doing and to choose better the kind of development approaches, processes I think I need. So let's start with some titles. So Vortex, the name of this, the title of this, the present, uh, of this symposium, is a title, and it is a very visual title. I think we are confronted with new situations, with new phenomena. We often need special titles, and sometimes we need new words, a new language even, just in order to grasp somehow, to understand the phenomenon. And sometimes we need more. And as for me, I even need something like categories. So even more so, I need to find names for these categories. And I ended up with titles which are composed, have you heard already some this morning, out of already existing words. In fact, I only found those words fit for naming the categories that are composed out of and with other words when they start to, let's say, they start to try to morph into quasi-words, into sometimes unspeakable words. And he gave you some examples of this idiosyncratic etymology. So he came few, outdiggerty, recombinatedness, sustainability, free connectedness, reprobability, autopia, digirectness, simplexity, surfusion, exterminus, extelligence. So extelligence was the first word actually which made me start composing all the other words all the other recombinant words. And the first time I read this word, extensions, was actually a text by Rob van Kranenburg on uh, the Internet of Things, on RFID, radio, frequency, identity, etc. But the word extelligence was, co was coined actually a long time ago, about 12 years ago, in 1997, by Ian Stewart and Jack Cohn, in their book, Figments of Reality. Now, they define intelligence as all the cultural capital that is available to us. Intelligence, then, is supposed to be in our brain. To have access to intelligence, we need capital. We need to have at least a mobile and pay for using it. And we need the skills to negotiate our privacy in order to protect our own intelligence from dissolving completely into capital. Even more important, the two writers regarded the complicity, it's a word also be heard already, complicity of intelligence and extelligence as fundamental to the development of consciousness. And as you know, the word complicity is also a composite word, a recombinant word. It is a mix of complexity and simplicity. By complicity, I mean, but complicity, for me, it doesn't sound really enough composite light, so I, I, I thought I would prefer to use the term simplexity. Here's another one. It's, it's even stranger. It's fascination. It's a kind of a contraction of managed fascination. You know, it, it starts to be like lingo from Mars. You know? So we have fascination, simplexity, Another one here, mix fixed, something like mega fixed, massive mix. Um, impactulation, something like modulated impact. So these kind of hybrid terms were somehow helping me to name the categories. But then what kind of categories? 
Modulated impact, impactulation, for example, being a category of what? The categories for me start to function like criteria. I saw it was a, I, as if they allowed me to understand, you know, to measure, evaluate somehow, to come to terms with the way I was positioning, trying to position myself as a maker in the media sphere. A kind of, you know, a, looking for a kind of dynamic dimension, an ecology of oneself, if you like, and of everything and everyone and everywhere with a lot of parameters in place. Then I looked for a name for the type of categories, for, to name the whole thing of categories, and I thought it, it, should be, it could be something like categories, not of enactment really, but like the, the two, like categories of disenactment or whatever. So it's like a category of ontontandelen, if you like. So the categories of simplicity, mix fixing, impactulation, machination, for me they point to the possibility of measuring degrees of disenactment and of mapping my way of positioning, taking in positions in a modular way at a certain stage in a specific moment of content of development. Now, the difference, these new categories, the categories of disenactment, make with other already existing criteria of judgment, such as we find in aesthetics, you know, in poetics, Aristoteles, in cultural studies, the difference lies in the fact that the new categories do not come from the realm of making, creation itself, neither from the realm of criticism and theory. They come originally out of the region of the, eff of the effect, from the field where the effects are at work, the effects of creation, of art, of making in a broad sense, on the viewers, the users, the public. So the categories of enactment that I use do not come out of art itself, creation, reflection, technical investigation, but out of the phenomenon of art, the phenomenon of creation, of making, media. In that sense, they lead to different kinds of discoveries. They're somehow in a way similar to that of Merleau-Ponty, when he pointed out, you know, uh, just after the Second World War, when he wrote his book, The Phenomenology of Perception. So what they do is that they lead me to rediscover art, criticism and creation, out of an act of observing art and its making in progress as a phenomenon. The act of making in this sense becomes an act of constantly resetting my position. Not so much a situation of navigating, negotiating between positions and points of view, no, but of experimenting temporarily with different profiles, not of action, but of re or better disenactment, and of switching between the profiles, jumping from one to the other. So the profiles, they also have recombinant names. You know, very strange, here they are, re reprofiled virality, switch worked, deregrammed, procycled, fitness, timeability, surfusion. Surfusion is the composite of surface and fusion. You know, the mix again, surfusion. Surfusion, for example, is what the visitors saw in the installation that we made, you know, what I told you about, Farum 2.0. Because what people saw in that installation, which had a lot of projections, um, and of course, as Keith says, you cannot see it really on DVD, but you, can, you could see it in the installation environment itself. What they saw were not images, not projected images, not surfaces neither. What they saw were the effects of surfaces, surfusion. And the key word for the visitors that came out of it was adaptation. What I try to do as a maker, but also now and then as a coach together with students, is to experiment with this kind of hip-hop mind mapping and to experiment with these categories of disenactment. I try to create situations of development then which do not belong any longer to the art practice, strictly speaking, but which let creation become from a context of mix-fix, simplexity, machination, surfusion, etc., etc. And here are then some types of the workshops and guest courses I set up. They also get some titles in. One was Before Less Becomes More, In the Mood of, for Architecture, No Rebel Without a Gadget, Falling in Love with Things, Vertigo Architecture. 
So these titles, they do not hide anything. At best, they are understood literally as they mobilize some reverse aspect of our practice of the making process. Before less becomes more, for example, points to a space and time before less becomes more. And as you know, less becomes more, less is more, points to dogma represented by professional storytelling writers. At the same time, to me, you know, the titles are deliberately somehow confusing. The titles are more common to stories, to fiction, than to workshops. And stories, in the sense of you no know, storia, histories, they are the workshops, rediscovering the making process and development as a storia, as a history, as something that happens as a unique event. It is all about being complicit, not the word we heard this morning often, being simply complex. So let's call it, it's all about being simplex. Oh, it's all about simplex. Take the very first category, one I called impact, as a degree of impactulation. You know, we as makers, we, don't, we have to be impact, but we don't need to ha make 100% impact, etc., etc. Two years ago, with that, I announced in Amsterdam the birth of a new science, a joke, and called it impactology. A new science that teaches us more about the techniques of impact and their implication for the maker, the making process and the end result. But at the same time, it is a new kind of learning, I guess, and I guess this small is something that resembles what Paul Virilio points at when he calls for a new academy, where we can learn more about these kind of techniques, such as techniques of impact, of impactulation, techniques, you know, etc., of storytelling, etc. What we also need is a new vocabulary, new terms, new names, and some may say all this is a kind of super late capitalist, capitalistic pragmatism, but I think it's more kind of a, you know, a kind of a real activism, if you like, you know, real-time disactivism, you know, in a space that is continuously narrowing the already limited opportunities of dissent. So that's the reason why, oh, it's gone, okay, there was this, uh, anyway, I didn't notice. But I thought that, that was the reason why, you know, I, it closed off again. Anyway, that was the, uh, you, you saw this, this kind of Mickey zombie kind of um, figure coming out of um, a Goya uh, etching. And that actually was, uh, you know, was a, was a mix by Jake and Dinos Chapman. Yeah, just to... So actually, what is interesting about this picture, not only because I more or less resemble the figure, this kind of Mickey Zombie, but uh, also because actually the Chapman artists they introduced themselves, uh, they introduced themselves all, uh, also a category of this enactment, and they named their category, skipping damaged area, uh, named rockness, you know, escroquerie, you know, schurkerij. They called their series of regoyas insults to injury. Now, pictures, media, the techniques employed, just in a way like capitalism, they have no singular logic, no essence. You know, capitalism and media, they draw the energy from the chemistry from what's outside, for what is already there. And you could say, well, maybe that's also the case also for the working table. And as far as I see it, you know, I see the working arena or the working place more and more becoming an arena. And it was, uh, I just stopped here with uh, a quite interesting quote by Mike Davis in, um, in his book, uh, in his, uh, Evil Paradises, his text uh, which is called Dreamland. So when I say, well, you know, the working place becomes an arena, and I put a quote of him next to it, with rules and working procedures that no longer contain their own interpretations, Negotiation, therefore, becomes an integral part of development and exchange. The frame, the border, the specificity of the chosen discipline are no longer limits. They form a horizon which at every point opens up to other territories. So that's a bit... What do you want to see? Okay, we can, we can show a bit of video. Yeah, it can. 
That's the end of what I wanted to say. Uh, which one? The uh, which one? <laughs> but anyway, just show the picture. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing. Yeah, just the whole thing. Yeah. But anyway, we, we are short in time, huh? So uh, maybe just skip this and. Uh, yeah, sure. You, you can also see something later uh, because. So, are there questions? That is, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So. We can watch this maybe later or so, but if you have some questions, just stay here to see if you can. Keys. It was that uh, quote was really interesting. I don't remember having said that, but I, I, I am really interested in this idea of impactology. Uh, so it, it sounds like a kind of slightly tongue-in-cheek word, uh, but uh, could you talk a, a little more, maybe just summarize the main points about what, what impactology would consist of in practice? Well, yeah, for me, I mean, uh, that is published. It's in the text. But anyway, I say it. For me, uh, no, impact... Uh, it, in a sense, it was more in the context of legislation. Now, the concept the, the, uh, there came from it. Uh, what I want to uh, achieve is an environment with pictures and media, but in a way um, that people would spend more time with images, not in the relation of image as information, but image that somehow addresses and works on our bodies, on the whole sensitive uh, capacities of how a body experiences, you know, like something like images. So therefore, we, we had to find the space where um, uh, somehow, you know, first of all, uh, you know, it, it could not be about a lot of images, it could not be about quantity, it could not be about information. Um, and we have to also, we had to have um, a space where um, people actually never really found their ultimate perfect position to view the picture. So because like that way, the visitors were like obliged to move around all the time in order to find more or less the kind of picture that satisfied more or less their, their desire to see it because it was a space full of projections. And there were a lot of reflections, there were a lot of suppositions, etc. So you, you actually had to move all the time to involve your body, if you like, to find your position in space, to actually f hold it, find the moment where, f you know, somehow you've, you got this balance of, you know, attention towards a picture. So that's the reason, you know, I, and essentially it was your, your you know, your, you, you reminded you, you were actually saying it, I was talking about the same installation that you did here about Antwerp, having your example where you put everything there, all the nice noises up. And that's the reason why I start to think, wow, if that is impact, you know, then we, you know, I cannot imagine you do anything else than you know, react to this impact. It is not a space anymore for reflection or experience. It's a space to hide, to run, or to counter uh, with counter impact. And in a sense, I thought it was also a very interesting, uh, you know, critical element towards, you know, towards something like YouTube. Because that's the reason also, also why I see in YouTube this kind of films and then counter films and remixes. And top, top. It's like impact, counter impact. It's like counter terrorism of this kind of. So, and, of course, and of course, it's also like stimulated in that way. You get this kind of competition of hitting hard. And therefore, it has to be short, it has to be really direct, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I thought, well, okay, um, there must be a way to, you know, to deal with impact, because as we, are, as we all are makers, of course, we, yeah, we have to impact some people. You know? Otherwise, if we, do, if we have zero impact, nobody will notice that we exist. So, of course, we would die. You know? <laughs> so, we, ha we have to do something. But we don't, I mean, it's not necessary. You have, you have to do 100% impact. 
Of course, if, if, if you want to make an ad or if you want to, you know, have prime time, you know, presence on television, of course, there I think you're obliged to go for 100% impact in mainstream media, whatever, whatever. If you're a politician or whatever, well, you you have to have 100% impact, I guess. I'm afraid, but as an artist, you're not obliged to. As an artist, you can say, well, okay, I can I can start to, you know. Make this more modular, if you like. Try to, as one of the elements in your workspace, say, well, this is element impact. And say, okay, well, how much do I really need? And how much do I really want? Do I really want to imp have, you know, uh, create a full impact on my audience? Or do I leave some space where this audience can find their own way? At the risk of that I lose a bit of control of my manipulative power. Um, but that, in that way, you know, you start also then to create, again, a space between your work and the audience. And it is exactly in that space, of course, that you get this possibility of um, creating a real experience uh, where, you know, you, your audience can start to build their own relation and positioning to your work, etc., etc., etc. So this is from out of this kind of impact thing that I thought, well, there are other categories. Like, for example, this thing is uh, simplex or, or complicity. Yeah? As a maker, we are really always in the world. So in the media sphere, that means we are, of course, by definition, complicit. So it, there too, it becomes a way of saying, well, um, how, how do I deal with my complicity? How do I express it in my work or not? How do, do I make it a critical element of self-reflection present in the work or not? How do I share this concern with my public? Uh, so it becomes something like, again, like a parameter, which is, uh, and that's the, the thing of these kind of parameters, the other kind of parameters or categories, if you like, which come out of aesthetics or poetics or whatever, or creation, they come out of the field of the presentation, the field where the effect of media happens. They come out of the realm of the user, if you like, of the public, of this relation between your media and those who eventually see it, do something with it, react to it. So that's the reason I started to think up with lots of these kind of, you know, kind of categories which are taken out of the world, of the media sphere of the world, and start to, start to, you know, start to work and experiment um, in setting up kind of experiments uh, with students, also, etc., in you know, in how that could eventually help to create some kind of, you know, some kind, some kind of project, experimental project approaches, um, which in some somehow, you know, which uh, um, where you as a maker give up also, also, you know, part of your control, part of your, you know, genius, <laughs> part of your, you know. Uh, unity, you know, part of your central power. You, you, you make yourself deliberately somehow dependent on external parameters and try to set up a kind of dynamic process. And of course, we all know you do that, you know, you do that not when you start to make things. And okay, when you start to make things, then we go back to the techniques. Then it's good, you, you know how to make it, you, you, you learn the techniques, and you, all, you have good skills because it's it's always interesting, I think, that you're capable of making very good work, a very strong work, a very well-made work, I think. Even if it's bad, ma badly made, that you know that you can make it very well bad. You know? um, but that's when you start to make it. But before, I think, before, and we spoke about this, it was not a strange word, it was kind of a re deep participation? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not a composite again. You know, we are in this kind of very strange words, which like you know these composites, which like they, it's like they flip flop, they they they, they reverse themselves, they become like very uh, hybrid monsters, you know. And I think, but the other hand, it helps somehow to to you know to you know to to. Yeah, we, we get into kind of a complicity uh, theory. <laughs> we get, we, we all, of course, we are all part of the media sphere. We are all in it, and that's, that's, I think, what is happening. So, in order to find ways out, I think it would be interesting to create, you know, workshops or collaborations or setups where, you know, you you sort you sort of, you know, build an environment of development with these kind of criteria 
that are from normally that doesn't belong to the work table, but they belong to the reception and reaction, etc., etc., to other people of the effects of media. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I would like to round this up. Of, let's say actually, say thank you to you and say thank you to all the speakers in this morning session. Um,